The advent of Web3 is arguably some of the most important technologies that we as consumers have encountered today. Web3 has given us NFTs. Web3 has given us decentralized finance, or DeFi for short. But what is Web3? And very importantly, how do you keep yourself safe in this new landscape? This really sets up the conversation of what is the difference between a hot wallet and a cold wallet, and which one should you use? That's what this video is all about. So let's get going. When we talk about Web3, what we're really talking about is the advent of using a browser to interact with a blockchain itself. What I'm talking about is when we are browsing a website and we want to make a purchase on that website using something like Ethereum or using something like Solana. The idea now is that we can have our blockchain's wallet, our wallet address in the browser and we can send commands from that wallet to the website, which are carried out on the blockchain itself. This is why we've started to see things like NFT marketplaces and DeFi, where de decentralized finance exchanges, as well as lending products are now all coming out because we can send these commands directly from our wallet, which is built into the browser itself, straight through the website and into the blockchain. This also is an interesting concept that it changes the way authentication is handled. We don't really need usernames or passwords anymore because we have our public and private keys. That's what we use to create wallets and interact with the blockchain itself. So we can identify ourselves with the website by saying like, here's, here's my wallet address. This is it, this is me. And anybody who wants to interact with this wallet address, guess what? They need to have the private keys that I have in order to do it. So it's actually a pretty secure way to do things, but it's not secure enough to just trust your web browser to have all of the keys to the kingdom, right? This is where we start to set up the concept of hot wallets versus cold wallets. And this is where I'm gonna take a little step a little bit further, we're gonna draw it up, and then we're gonna demonstrate how you could actually get started deploying both a hot wallet and a cold wallet and how you would use both of them at the same time. Let's go. So it's easier to just demonstrate what this really means, how it really works uh, from the actual web perspective itself. Now I'm gonna show you what is Web3 from the perspective of Ethereum's blockchain as well as from Solana's blockchain. You're gonna notice they look and feel very similar to each other because effectively at the end of the day, Web3 is Web3. So I've got my, my Chrome browser up here and the first website I'm gonna to go to is OpenSea.io. It's like the OpenOcean.io and this is an NFT marketplace. This is where a lot of people come to browse and purchase art as well as generative profile picture projects. I'm gonna have more content about NFTs coming up and why they're such a big deal, why they're so popular, why they sell for such outrageous prices. So make sure you hit that subscribe button down below if you're liking the content that you see here and you wanna actually check out more about what NFTs are all about. I'm gonna explain it all to you. So let's say I click on this one here. I'm like, that artwork is actually pretty stinking cool. Uh, I definitely want to buy that. So if I click on it just to get, you know, a bigger picture of it, I can get a nice preview and I'm like, oh, look at all the colors. Look at all the detail that's going on here. I would like to be an owner of this piece of art. Well, it tells me right here, this is gonna cost you 1.75 Ethereum. I'm like, cool, let's click buy. And it tells you, you need to sign in. What's this all about? This is saying, if you wanna buy this, you need to place a transaction on the Ethereum blockchain. And instead of signing in with a username and password, instead what you're gonna do is you're gonna sign in with your Ethereum wallet. And this wallet is very frequently a uh, extension that is built into Chrome. In this case, when you wanna interact with the Ethereum blockchain, you're gonna use an extension called MetaMask. That's a very, very popular one to do. There's a mobile version of it too. Uh, and it has a web browser built into it so you can do all of this on the fly on the mobile if that's what you want to do. So it tells you you want to sign in and this is all for NFTs. But if you also want to participate in DeFi, if you want to do uh, swapping one Ethereum based currency for another, or if you wanted to uh, you know, do some lending practices. If you wanted to do liquidity pools or yield farming, again, that's content that I'm going to cover uh, coming up here. You could go to some place like Uniswap. I think it's .org. Let's make sure. Oh, I got to spell it right. 
yeah, uniswap.org, there we go. And from the top right, I can click launch app. And you see here, it's telling you, okay, if you wanna do some swaps, you gotta connect to your wallet first. And again, this is how you know you're on a web free website. We're not signing in with a username and a password. We're signing in with our actual wallet. And our wallet will be able to send commands down to this website. So if I wanted to swap Ethereum for say USDC, I could do that right here on this website, passing all of my commands through uh, from this actual uh, Chrome extension here called MetaMask. Now the same thing goes for uh, all, pretty much all blockchains that have some form of smart contracts. Ethereum leans heavily on the MetaMask wallet. Solana, on the other hand, also has some opportunities here for you. At a website like Saber.so, S-A-B-E-R dot S-O, you have the exact same DeFi functionality where you can swap tokens on the Solana blockchain. Or if you're interested in NFTs, we can go to some place like DigitalEyes.Markets. Oh, I think it's dot market. And this is where you can buy NFTs that exist on Solana. I'm a big fan of NFTs on Solana and Solana in general. But the thing is, is MetaMask was built for Ethereum. What is Solana using? What is the Web3 Chrome extension that we can use with Solana? That's called Phantom. And that's what I want to walk you through today because there are actually some risks associated with Web3 and there's a reason why you actually want to use something called a hot wallet versus a cold wallet. So let's talk about this. So let's get started with the first basic thing that we want to do, which is create our hot wallet. I'm going to search for Chrome extensions and it's going to do, you know, give me a little Chrome web store link right here, the very first one that I'm going to do. And the wallet that I want to install to make as my hot wallet is going to be called Phantom. This is how we can sign in to Web3 sites on the Solana bot blockchain. It tells you right here, this is it right there at the top. It's got a little ghost symbol up here surrounded by a purple circle. It says a crypto wallet reimagined for DeFi and NFTs. And this honestly is one of the best wallets I've ever used. I cannot wait for their uh, wet their mobile wallet here. I've got no affiliation to Phantom. They're not paying me to say this. I'm telling you this from the bottom of my heart. If you're interacting with the Solana blockchain, you want to use Phantom. So this is how we're going to get started. I'm going to say add to Chrome. It's going to say, are you sure you want to add the extension? I'm going to click yes to that. And next thing I know, the extension is added. So first thing it comes up with is create a new wallet. This is going to be what we call our hot wallet. Now, what's the point of the hot wallet? The hot wallet is what we want to use for trading. It's what we want to use for sending and receiving. And it's what we want to use, most importantly, for any Web3 interactions that we have. The idea here is that when you connect to a Web3 website, even if they're like super reputable, uh, you, you just never know for sure if you're being duped. There's unfortunately there's a lot of bad actors out there, a lot of people who commit fraud, or a lot of people who impersonate seemingly legitimate websites. And when you interact with these websites and you interact with the blockchain on behalf of these websites, guess what? You're signing contracts along the way. And one of the biggest threats that you as an investor or a holder have is the fact that you could get duped into clicking on a link and connecting to that website and what you've actually done is sign the contract that gives them the keys to your kingdom. And the next thing you know, they've emptied your entire wallet. They've got all of your coins. They've got all of your NSTs. The whole thing is just gone. And the cool, the crazy thing about, not the cool, the crazy thing about this is uh, you can interact with a website, you could connect to it, and then they could get you weeks later because you signed the contract. So we use our hot wallet to send and receive and transfer things and interact with NFTs. And then when we're done, we want to send all of the stuff, all of the coins that we received or NFTs that we received, we choose to send it to a cold wallet, which is derived from a hardware device, a ledger device. And the crazy cool thing about this is this phantom wallet here can handle both. We can have a hot wallet that Phantom is about to create right now, and then we can have a cold wallet that Phantom can derive from the private keys of your Ledger Nano, your Ledger Nano or your Trezor device. So I'm going to walk you through what does that look like? What does this really feel like? Let's create our hot wallet first. I'm going to create a new wallet. 
This is going to be the secret recovery phrase. I'm cool with you seeing this because I will absolutely never use this wallet, not once ever again, as soon as I am done recording this video. So I'm going to click copy here and I'm going to bring up my notepad and I'm going to bring it onto the screen and paste it. And now I'm going to go, okay, I saved it somewhere because I'm sure it's going to ask me to, uh, you know, fix this. Let's create a password. Well, maybe it's not going to ask me. So sometimes when you create these wallets, they make you save it somewhere because then the next one, you're like, what's the eighth word that we gave you? I'll say, I agree to the terms and click save. It tells you a little pro tip about how you can get to Phantom. Uh, you're all done. You click finish. And look, look, now in the top right, when I see here, I've got Phantom installed. Now when I click, look, this is my hot wallet. I now have a wallet in the Solana blockchain that is ready to receive soul deposits. So if I actually say deposit soul, I can say send from a wallet or exchange. And look right there, I can click copy. I'll just bring up my notepad real quick. This is the address. This is my Solana address that I have now that I can use to send cryptocurrency or NFTs to my actual phantom wallet here. This is my actual hot wallet. So now what I can do is I can go back to these websites like Sabre here. I can choose connect wallet. I'll say continue. I'll choose phantom. It says connecting and it asks me, do I want to allow the site to connect to my wallet? This was that signing that I was talking about that you could have some risk. Uh, uh, now, Sabre is super, super reputable. I'm not gonna sit here and say, it's the most reputable thing ever. You've got nothing to worry about. I use Sabre every single day uh, and I use it with my hot wallet. So that way everything is nice and secure that way. So I'll click connect. And now I see right here, boom, my wallet is connected and it shows me my soul balance. So now when I want to swap soul for anything else that is available on Sabre's website, I can do that on my hot wallet. Similarly, I can jump over to Digital Eyes. I can choose Connect Wallet. I'll choose Phantom. And boom, just like that, I'm connected. And now with the soul that I have in my wallet, I can purchase, you know, DGN Apes, which are just such cool artwork. I, I love DGN Apes so much. That's why it's my profile uh, on, on Twitter. If you're not following me, make sure you get over there and follow me on Twitter so that you can get alerted to all the cool things that are happening. I also love Solana Monkeys so much. This is such a cool project first profile picture project uh on solana 90 soul floor these things are going to the moon it's just it's so much fun to watch um let's see if i can find a good one real quick no no, no. i'm getting distracted i'm getting distracted here we go so i've got the hot wallet i've now got a way that i can interact with these websites in web3 now what i need to do is i need to be like okay i purchased one of these solana monkeys and I don't want to leave it in the hot wallet where I may interact with websites or contracts in the future. And somebody could come in here and steal my monkey that I just paid, you know, uh, 30 grand for. That could be a big problem. So I want to move my monkey into cold storage. So what's the whole point of cold storage? Let me let me clear the screen here for a second. Let's get a nice clean website where I can uh, do this here. This is good right here. So the whole point with cold storage really at the end of the day comes down to the principle of two-factor authentication in order to do something uh, you need to have two of any three factors these three factors are something you know this is oftentimes a password or a pin number uh, it needs to be something you have this is your hardware device so this is going to be your ledger uh, or it could also be like your cell phone. You've, you've logged into your bank before, right? And then they've texted you a six digit code that you need to type in. Unless you have your cell phone on you to type that six digit code in, you're not getting into your website. The last one is something you are. This is gonna be like a thumbprint or a retina scan. Uh, nobody can access your stuff unless you are you. So with two factor authentication, we're taking any combination of these two things. Now think about this for a second. When I wanted to interact with the Digital Eyes website, one of the things that I had to do to get to my Phantom Wallet was I had to type in a password to unlock it. That's something that I know. But now what I wanna do is I wanna prevent anybody else from interacting with the blockchain or any of those things on my behalf. So I want them to also have to pass the test of something that you have. 
So one of the cool things that we can do on Phantom here is I can click this little hamburger menu and choose add and connect a new wallet. And then I can say, connect a hardware wallet. So what I need to do now is I need to open Ledger with unlocking it with my pen. So let me just do that. And then on my Ledger device, I will need to have the Solana app already installed. So we are making the assumption here that you know uh, how to operate your Ledger device and install apps on it using the Ledger Live app. It's very, very easy to do. So I've now opened the Solana app on my Ledger device. I'm gonna click continue here. It says, okay, well, let's pick your wallet address. And this is the one that I wanna use right there. The one that ends with BJBO. So I click add account and done. And look at this, look at this. Now in Phantom, I have both my wallet one and my ledger one. So there we go. Now I have a hot wallet that I can transact with. If I pretend for a moment that I've uh, bought an NFT using my hot wallet, I can now jump over to my ledger, click on Solana, click on receive and copy my address. So I can jump back to my hot wallet and I can send Sol or I can send NFTs directly from my Phantom wallet to my cold storage vault. And now I've secured it in such a way that nobody can interact with the blockchain in my cold storage unless they physically have access to my ledger device. When you use the Phantom wallet here, uh, and you try to send Sol or send NFTs from your cold storage, it will literally prompt you right here on your Ledger device, uh, do you want to proceed with this action? You need to confirm it on the Ledger device in order to actually interact with the blockchain. So this is why I like to say, you should have a hot wallet and you should have a cold wallet. The hot wallet is uh, basically where you're gonna take on the risk of interacting with websites and Web3 and smart contracts and so on. And once you've procured the assets that you've wanted to hold, you move that into cold storage. That is the way that you handle those things. Now, how can we simplify this without having to memorize and copy and paste these really long addresses? It all comes down to the .sol domains. And in the next video, I'm gonna show you how do you go about procuring a .sol domain within the Solana ecosystem. All right, this has been the difference between hot and cold storage and how you can get started with both using the Phantom Wallet. Thanks for stopping by y'all. I'll see you in the next one.